G'day everybody, welcome to the Game Face Footy Show, MP NFL Division 2 edition. I'm joined on the couch, this beautiful white couch that was falling apart before. Lovely couch, isn't it? <laughs> Tony Blackford and Chris Holcomb, welcome gentlemen. Good on you, Robbo. How are you, mate? Oh, mate, I'm excited because uh, football is back, definitely, in Division yeah. 2. We've seen some games. And, and, and yeah, we saw some a couple of games last week, and uh, Pearsdale Hulks, like, uh, they kicked 34 points or something like that to nothing in the last quarter to overrun um, Rye Football Club. Yeah, well, we've got some footage of the last two goals. Uh, we'll, we'll run that footage. Uh, two great clubs, obviously, you know, you know a lot more about these two. Pearsdale, uh, tell us where and their both, form's at. Yeah, and b and both clubs, like Pearsdale lost a lot of good players in the off-season, mm. and um, Boris Hamilton has come across, he's always been uh, an understudy development coach. He takes on um, a senior job for the first time, so does Adam Kirkwood from Rye, mm. so they were both coaching their first senior game, um, and look, Rye had the upper hand all day, but... Pearsdale come home with a wind mm. and they use that wind and uh, yeah to hold Rye scoreless and to kick the last two goals to end up winning by um, 10 points. Don't you love games like that? Mark Holt kicks four in his first game for MP NFL. Uh, first game for Coringal obviously yes. spent decades at mm. Cranbourne. Yes um, and been a multiple goal sc scorer hasn't he Holt? Yeah he kicks big bags. He didn't look he looked a little bit scratchy on the weekend. Mm. Well that was a little well, bit wet. A bit slippery early. Windy. Yeah windy the and skills wet. Skills weren't good. No and as the, the ground dried up he, he'll get better and I think that Holt will um, beat up on a lot of sides somewhere along the line. He will. He's a big strong man. Uh, they won't have the power mm -hmm. to be able to go with him. And especially if they can get their supply down to him yeah. a lot quicker and easier. There's not many full forwards like that anymore. No. Yeah, there used to be heaps. When we were yeah. coming through, big brooded full yeah. forward that you'd yeah. Yeah. beat you over the head if you hit him too hard. Football's different these days, yeah. though, isn't it? You know, it's, it's a running game, yeah. you know, sticking it full forward. Like, he's a big body and he like to body up. But the thing about holding in his younger days, he could really get something off the ground, you know, push and shove, pick up, and, and kick an on the run goal. I don't know what he's going to rely on his marking anymore. Someone that certainly relies on his marking a lot is Travis Clug because he's absolutely brilliant at it. One of the best clunkers I've ever seen, especially mm. at AFL level, is at uh, Collingwood. But he's at the Yabbies now, boys. Yeah, he's yeah, on for the one for, game. For the one game, mm. yeah, they've which is fantastic. A, they've done that a bit at Div 2. Yeah. I'm actually a fan of it now. I wasn't early. Yeah. But, um, but I think it generates a lot yeah, of support. It, does. it generates money and it gets the club, especially if they can get a big day. And yeah. I, I think what happens with those sort of people, they then stay for the night. Yeah. They do a bit of a, a hosting. Yeah, of, lotion and, or yeah. Yeah. The whisper is they've asked him to play four or five. They Ooh. always say that. Play four or five, we'll get you qualified for finals. <laughs> we'll win you a premiership anyway. So in my experience, because I've done a couple of these one-offs, boys, I don't know if you know that. You know, they, <laughs> they call them cashies, but I, call them, I don't call them something else. Uh, <laughs> they always say, come on, we'll get you for four or five. Whisper is they've asked them for four or five. You never know, you yeah. might pull another jumper on for the Yabbies. Travis Cloak plays for the Yabbies and Plugger caught up with him. Check it out. G'day guys, Plugger from Game Face here. I'm joined by some good company. To my left, I've got Travis Cloak, 250 games, 450 goals for the Collingwood Magpies. He's going to be suiting up for Tyab in round two, mate. You excited for that? Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, when I got a call to ask to come down, down the morning, to have a bit of a run. Um, couldn't say no, lovely part of the world, so it should be a nice day. And Azza, you must be excited to have him uh, running deeper off centre-half forward, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of uh, forwards that we've got down there that aren't so happy about it, but they're going to have to sit back a little bit, I reckon. You had a taste of local footy last year playing for Hurstbridge. Um, you're playing in a brand new competition for one game. What are you expecting, mate? Oh, obviously, the, the different perspective of footy, mate, um, coming back and actually having fun uh, at local level has been great. And last year, the opportunity to play with my brother was there, so I did it and um, got the opportunity to have a kick around once again. And footy's a great game. Um, I love it. I've been bored into it, so um, I look forward to hopefully the sun's out and um, kick a few goals and we have a win. Ah, yes, no doubt a quality player like Travis Cloak will have some sort of impact with the Yabbies there. They'd be really happy to have him. Robbo, were you, did you make an impact when you had one of those one-off games? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> it depended on the pay. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. No, I, I absolutely tried my hardest to. Because you feel like, and we just spoke about it before, clubs do put a lot into this. They want to make their clubs great and get yes. people through the gates. It's the lifeblood of football clubs. Get them, get them in, buy stuff through the cafeteria, and if you, you kind of feel like you are helping when you do this, and yeah. you know, Brendan Favola's done it for a lot of years, Jason Ackermanis, uh, Barry Hall. Yep. You know, we're not, what do they say, raping and pillaging clubs of all their, <laughs> all their money. No, well, not me anyway, maybe Fed. 
No, but uh, Travis won't be doing that. But it does we, generate money. It does. You know, yeah. obviously to get you on board, it does generate money for the club. Yeah. Spot on, Black Hairs. Yes, it absolutely does. And I, it's been the joy of my life, actually, getting out there and playing football with guys. That you'd never. There's some great guys and Robert, out there. You'd meet some lovely people Rippers. along the way. Absolutely. And I miss footy And that's what clubs. local footy clubs are all about, is that the people that generate... Yeah. Um, that interest around the club. Absolutely, and the town as well. What we're endeavouring to do at Game Face and on our footy shows is bring you closer to football clubs and check out this interview with the Pearsdale coach. Uh, here with the new coach uh, in Boris. Um, how you going mate, first season at the club? Yeah, really good. No, numbers have been great, really enjoying the, the challenge so far and yeah, it's been, it's been great. Obviously it's the first season out here, where have you come from? I was at Noble Park last year, um, which is a little bit different surroundings to here. Uh, a bit more of a country feel. With the numbers being so good, it's really been able to implement some um, some current and modern uh, ideas to the club. We've actually just gone through the uh, appointment of our leadership group, which was nominated by the players, which, uh, which we're big on having player input and making the culture about uh, the, the club and the players driving it to where we want to go. So um, at this stage, yeah, things are... Things are on the up and they're exciting around the club. The goal kickers, we've already talked about Holdy Boy, some other names there. Yeah, Benny Garlic got two, Alanis two. I think he just switched over to Keringle, didn't he? Yeah, he came back from Hastings, Hastings. Dale Alanis. Yes. So he's come back with that uh, influx of um, Dunny and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. He's a pretty uh, popular character, Dunny. Would have dragged a couple with him over Yeah, there. without a doubt. So Glenn Boynton's come back and he's um, for Rye. That was his first game. He kicked two. Yep. Um, yeah. So that was that was uh, you know there was only two games on the weekend, Hulk. So yeah. after this week's round, then you'll see a little bit more. I will. And again, it needs to be said, it wasn't a great day for goal kickers uh, last week. No. Not on Saturday and Sunday. It, it, like, yeah, it's uh, Melbourne winters. It's back, isn't it? You know, footy season back when, <laughs> it was when a the bit rain's early, coming though, in, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, boys, we've got some games coming up. We need to talk about them. Crib Point versus Rye, the first one. Cribby's first go at it this year. Yeah, and look, Cribby last year were one of the sides that didn't win a lot of games, and mm. um, they've got a new coach in Stevie Hamill, who's been an outstanding yeah. footballer in his own right, mm -hmm. Steve. Um, I reckon he's taken on a, a huge job. He's got some good people around him, Andrew Brady, uh, Andrew Gilmore. So hopefully um, they're going to have enough uh, uh, yeah, that, they'll be thereabouts, but I, I think that Rye will be too strong. Yeah, I think it's going to be a long year for Cribby again, but Rye would have expected last week to well, uh, I, win that game. I think that they would have penciled that one in, yeah, you know, definitely. to play Pearsdale um, after losing a lot of players yeah. in the yeah. off season. Um, that's a great win by Pearsdale last week. Yeah, I think Rye will bounce back hard this week. There we go. Rye is the pick. Kringle versus Red Hill. Looks to be a good one. Massive game, and that could be a grand final preview. Well, it could be, mate. Um, both red and white, and um, I think that Red Hill are obviously the team to beat yeah. Hulk, so I think that they've recruited really well in the off-season. Um, Harry Larwell comes back, and he's a, a key a key forward for them. Yeah. Um, but so have Coringle. I think Coringle last year limped into finals. They, they were injured. Um, they had a lot of injuries, whereas they started off the season quite well. Stanley comes back into that side. So does the fella from um, um, the Eastern Districts. I can't think of his name, but um, he's a very good player too, Holtz. Yeah. I but can't think of his name, but Holtz, Holt will straighten them up. Yeah. I think it's going to be huge too with that young Red Hill Ruckman against... Did you see any of Goodall on Good, the weekend? No. Been in a good paddock. Yeah. yeah I think but he always uh, has. How did he ruck though? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah, and Harry Wimpope, he's a really good Ruckman for, for Red Hill. He is. Yeah, he is. But look, uh, James Fletcher back too. From at, uh, he was at Richmond for uh, two or three years. Still yeah. on the list up there, I think. But Isn't, uh, he, in the the Isn't yeah. he in the leadership group of Richmond? Uh, no, no, no. I don't know if he will. I think he's going to play more footy back at Red Hill, which would be good for them. Yeah. But, um, I think if you have a look at it, I think still Red Hill's pace around the ground are going to get Kringle early. Uh, I think they're going to take a while to adjust to the way Dunny's going to coach them. So um, once they get that under uh, wraps, I think it'll be a closer contest, but Red Hill right now. Yeah. Been in uh, good paddocks. The saying is, <laughs> those in glass houses. Probably. Move on to the next game really quickly. Uh, another tasty one, Lang Warren versus Chelsea boys. Yeah, yeah cracker. Yeah, yeah, really good. And two sides that have recruited well. Very well. Both have recruited extremely well. And um, getting, getting McGuinness and um, Rolf across 
as, uh, Amalfi. As, Amalfi is another one. Yeah, so Langmorin, yeah, come up really good. Uh, Chelsea, the same though. Foster. Sean Foster. Yeah. Come across. Gardner. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, brain is Brain's the most brother. fantastic. Yeah, and so. his brother too. Yeah. And they've picked up a ruckman. Which is forces them, and yeah. which is great because their centre half back last year came in and did all the ruck work. Yeah. So he can push back to the back line. So I think that Chelsea will be one of the sides to beat. I think Lang Warren at home um, in a real close one. I don't think you could get too much into round one. I think it could go either way. I don't think mm. this will have too much bearing on what will happen come September. Mm. But um, yeah, I'd probably lean toward Lang Warren. Right. Well, we'll move on to the next game. Two proud clubs. Pierce Dale versus Devon Meadows should be a should be a nice tough affair. This one. Yeah. Definitely. Pearsdale, obviously, getting that win. They'll be happy and up and about. Devon had a crack but just missed out against Karingal, who's probably they didn't think that they were going to get that close to. Mm. Um, so, yeah, Devon, uh, the signs are there that they're going to have a good year. Yeah, I think they you know, they've probably got some good firepower down there with three, Theodorus. I think it was great for Pearsdale. Gee, mm. they, I think they've banked on blooding all these young kids and... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was really good for him last week. It gives him a lot of belief, and it, um, it's great for the coach because what he's implemented in the off-season, mm -hmm. he's got the reward for it straight away. I think Devon Meadows in a real close one, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm with him. Boys have both got Devon Meadows. Let's move on to Somerville versus Seaford. Mass Exodus at Somerville. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen there. Yeah, I think, oh, look, Sammy... Uh, Sedgwick is going to be their captain, yep. which is great. He's been a stalwart of the club, and um, I think that they'll... I think they'll be on the fringe of um, just outside the finals. I think Seaford um, have got a, a lot of their ex-players back to the club. There's a, a bit of spark around there. You're a big rep for Seaford this year, aren't you? Well, I think that last year in, in uh, Division 1, they lost seven or eight games under 20 points. So in a tight competition, that... Um, you know, so they were thereabouts, but they just weren't able to, to get the results that they wanted. They were really well coached last year. Obviously, Benny Murphy's not coached. Moved on, yeah. He's gone up to Darwin, which is a huge loss. Almost losing yeah. one of your better players. And I think Young Howlett, too, did his ACL late in the year, so I don't know if he's going to be up early. Yeah. Uh, but I still expect to see... Eddie Fisher's come on as chairman of selectors, so yeah. he'll run, run the bench for him. So he's, he's a, a very experienced person. So I think the, the new coach, who I'm not too sure... Oh, I'm not sure either. No. I know Rourke's um, captain this year. Yeah, which is great, but I think he's going to have a slow start, isn't he, um, coming back from an injury? He's often injured. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to the last game, boys. Hastings versus Tyab. How are you seeing it? Yeah, I think Favola was meant to play this, but he's pulled out yeah. Hulk. So well, I think, um, by all reports, Hastings have had a good pre-season. I, I was wrapped with the way Tyab went about things last yeah. year, and um, this time last year, Tyab led... Hastings by 24 or 30 points and were overrun. I think they're a better and well more equipped side now. Yeah. Um, so if they can get that start, I don't think they'll let it up. I think if we had looked at the game last year, round one, we were saying that uh, Hastings by 25, 30 goals. Yes. With Ferb not playing, a couple of Lev Hastings with Ty picking up a few, you'd almost lean toward a Yabby victory. Yeah, I think the, the Yabbies would have done a good solid pro season. Um, but Hastings at home are always hard to beat. Yeah. I'll still take Hastings. The boys have dissected the bejesus out of this one and given us all the inside <laughs> goss. Uh, I'm going to be watching very closely who wins these ones because I reckon you guys are absolute... Well, you're, you're, you're geniuses when it comes to the MP and FL. Sounds good, but you will going to make They've got all the info, Sounds that's for sure. We'll get cool words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll take it. You're always going to you know, guarantee on a pump up with me, boys. I always try to make you feel good because you're great guys. And so am I. <laughs> and this has been a great show. Game Face, uh, MPNFL Division 2. Uh, thanks to all of our wonderful sponsors. Thanks to Tony Blackford and Chris Holcomb. Good on you, boys. We'll see you, you next week. Thanks, thanks for Come back. We'll see you then.